Guild Wars 2 is a Western-made MMORPG with buy-to-play expansions, a free-to-play base game, and a pay-for-cosmetic and slight convenience cash shop. This game is developed by ArenaNet and initially released in August 2012, since then having two major expansions with Heart of Thorns and Path of Fire, with a third expansion recently announced and expected sometime in 2021. Guild Wars 2 is commonly referred to as one of the most casual-friendly MMOs on the market due to its horizontal endgame progression where you can't really fall behind. The game also features content for everyone from PvE dungeons and raids to a fully voice acted ongoing main storyline to both large and small scale PvP as well as a fantastic transmog and fashion system with thousands of collectibles and achievements. But before we jump into it, a quick word from today's sponsor. Riders of Icarus M is a mobile MMORPG made in Unreal Engine 4 that's based on the PC MMO Riders of Icarus. This is the perfect game for people who enjoy collecting different mounts and pets to fight alongside you, as the game features an in-depth familiar system where your companions grow in strength the more you use them in battle. Aside from the familiar system, Riders of Icarus M also features large-scale aerial combat where you take to the skies on flying mounts, experiencing epic views and some of the most unrestricted movement so far in a mobile MMORPG. This game also features giant bosses out in the world in which players will need to come together both in the air and on foot in large numbers to successfully take down. And another interesting aspect of the game comes in the form of its skill link system, where you can experience the unique attacks of different classes in your party by linking with them for a period of time. So if you're looking for a brand new AAA mobile MMO with great graphics, a huge collection system, a full-fledged soundtrack and mounted combat, then click the link in the description below to receive $30 worth of items, including a limited edition familiar and pet when you pre-register with Riders of Icarus M today. So, Guild Wars 2. I haven't played much of this game since around August last year, but here's my account. I've got eight level 80s. I think this one's my main at the moment, a warrior, one slash man. Got my scourge slash reaper that I love to play in SPVP. Pretty cool transmog. My guardian mighty man. My herald Voss. My elementalist. Spooky stealth. My daredevil. My mesmer called Come on, bruh. And my level 80 Nord soul beast named Woman Meta here in Lion's Arch. Look at my badass great sword. This sword here is one of the coolest swords I think I've ever seen in an MMO, so I had to buy it. For those of you who are wondering how I have eight level 80 characters, I've basically leveled them all through these Tomes of Knowledge, which you get dropped from World vs. World. I've got another 170 stacked up if I ever wanted to boost other classes to level 80. Right now, there's no other classes I really want to play, so I guess I'm just going to let them stack up a bit. So when it comes to the story of Guild Wars 2, I've finished Path of Fire, but I didn't really do any of the living world stuff. Although, as you can see, all of these are unlocked, which means I was playing at the time of Living World Season 4, so I've unlocked the story without paying for it. But Ice Brood Saga, I need to buy all of these previous stories as I wasn't really playing the game at this time. Because I've logged in now, simply doing that has unlocked the most recent chapter for me to do. I feel like checking out some Ice Brood Saga content, so I'm going to unlock some of these and have a look. I've just transferred to a new server called Desolation and the population seems really good. Plenty of players hanging around Lion's Arch. Nobody wants to play a dead MMO and by the looks of it, still plenty of people playing this game, which is nice. Black Citadel Azura Gate. I haven't already done a whole lot of the story content in Guild Wars 2 or explored all of the zones because I'm more of a PvP player in this game. So what I'm going to experience in this video should all be completely new for me. For those of you who play MMOs for the story, Guild Wars 2 whose story is fully voice acted and many people play this game just for the story so if that's what you're looking for definitely check out this game but if you're like me and don't care about story that much there's plenty of other reasons to play this game too nice bit of attention to detail clicking on different characters moves my character's head even when he's standing still i've never noticed that before a lot of walking talking and role playing right now this is a pro luke quest can we sit down for maximum role play i think we can sit Wait, there's an achievement to sit in all of the chairs of the world. I need to shoot harpoons at whatever the hell this thing is. Big damage. Spin to win. Ooh, what's this? I guess this is one of the new zones. It's quite colourful, I like it. Participate in events to reassure legions about your presence. Okay, we've got a jumping puzzle up here. Oh wait, is it even a jumping puzzle anymore? I can literally just equip the springer. I guess that's the one bad thing about mounts. It does kind of 
make jumping puzzles a little bit irrelevant. They need to be designed for mounts now instead. I don't have the beetle racing mount yet. That's something I really need to work towards. Oh my god, there's a lot of players here. What the hell? We need to keep up the audience hype for another two and a half minutes. Giant flame monster appearing on the stage. It's picked us all up. What's it doing now? It's lobbed us across the map. This reminds me of the Break and Benjamin concert I went to recently in Adventure Quest 3D. Event rewards. This Griffin mount was a pain in the ass to unlock, but it's definitely worth it. I still need to put some more masteries in it for it to be really good, though. Oh, okay. This is a cool little event. I've got an event where I need to snipe things in the air. There it is. Help the bartender keep the customers liquored up. He wants the special... There you go. Get a bunch of volatile magic, do we? Is it me or is this zone exceptionally bright? I'm always a big fan of cozy, colourful zones in MMOs. You don't usually get a lot of this at endgame, but... This is a really nice zone. I'm enjoying it a lot. Another event. This one's an escort quest. Lots of players joining in again. I've actually kind of missed this about Guild Wars 2. The variety of the world events. They're pretty chill just to go around in a big group of players mindlessly killing things. It's not overly difficult content most of the time, but it at least makes you feel as though you're playing an MMO with so many other players around. I'm definitely going to be getting my thumbnail image from somewhere within this zone. It's got to be at least 15 of us now. Ooh! Oh god, I'm on the floor. I like this about Guild Wars 2. If you get killed, someone can rescue you. Pick you up off the floor. Mobs spawning everywhere. There's a solid 20 or 30 of us now. Lots of players here. Oh my god, my frame rate is going to be going to shit. There's at least 40 of us attacking it. So that's the world boss dead. This one here for the thumbnail. Really beautiful zone, I'm impressed. River Drake Broodmother. Crocodile monster. I think Warrior's pretty good for DPS. I've always enjoyed playing this class. Get Zerged Crocodile. This game's added a lot more new mount skins since the last time I've played it. One thing I dislike about Guild Wars 2's cash shop is everything's only on the cash shop for a limited time. So it gets you to kind of like panic buy. It creates a feeling of scarcity. I don't really want any of these mounts. I don't really like these skins. I want another skin, but... Just can't really buy it right now. These pauldrons look cool though. I'm helping out the chef and I'm gonna have to grab ingredients for him. Ah, oh, there it is. Two more sub quests and I've finished the prologue for Ice Brood Saga, then I can really get into the meat of it. Is that quest done? The story stuff's enjoyable, but it's not really something that works well for an entertaining video or something. Big damage, spin on these noobs. Yeah, this warrior is such a good solo class. I like it a lot. Pretty much finished this zone fairly close to map completion. Ooh, what's this? Bloody hell, big giant ice monsters just popped out. Now that's a cool monster. Dodger! Spinning me in circles, kind of cool. Bit of combat with the UI off, why not? This is where Guild Wars 2 really shines, when you're fighting big giant monsters like this one. Always looks so epic. Good fight, and it crumbles to ice. Wait, what? Why am I dying? Um... Oh, follow the torches. I was dying from frostbite. I need to go to the torches for safety. And that's the prologue of the Ice Brood Saga completed. So today I've decided to hop on over to my Reaper and do some SPVP. Haven't done this in a long time, so I'm probably going to be really bad, but hopefully we can get some wins. Stats so far, 98 games played, 51 games won, which isn't too bad. 45% of the games I've played have been on my Necromancer. I really need to find myself a staff that fits my fashion. Go here, put all of my AoE down. Go here. Ooh, what the hell is this? I've never tried this ultimate before, but that's pretty cool. I'm floating around like some kind of god of death. Okay, that's kind of crazy. Let's go into Reaper mode. Big damage. Spin to win. Putting down so much AoE. Get in there, do some spins. Oh, big damage. Res my friend. Give him a res. I got you, dude. Come on. Okay, this was a bad idea. We've captured all three points. This game's gonna end any second. Well, this was a bloody slaughter. It may look like I know what I'm doing in this game, but the truth is, I do just kind of button mash and 
generally makes me win. There it is, there's the win. Fuck it, let's queue for some ranked. This is the inventory on my Reaper. It's an absolute mess. Game really likes to smother you in rewards, and then it gives you rewards that unlock more rewards. And then you salvage the rewards for crafting resources that you can then sell to make some money. Good luck, team. Play for the objective, Craig. Take the point. Ooh, what was that? And where is that damage coming from? Hello? Oh god. Oh my god, that damage. Quick, Reaper form. Bloody hell, I've never seen damage like that before. Well, someone that knows how to PvP just took me out. Slowly redeeming myself. Oh my god, it's so close. Yes, there it is. We got the win. I got the most kills apparently, but I doubt that really means anything. I see you there with your armor, looking pretty good. And then you've got this peasant over here with the default armor. Steampunk themed outfit here. I don't think I've ever mentioned this before, but this SPVP I'm doing right here, this is something you can jump into straight away upon downloading the game at level one. And you can come in here, select a build, and then you're scaled to level 80 and put on an even footing with every other player. Your only restriction, however, comes in the form of what builds you'll have access to, as you wouldn't have unlocked all of the specializations. But there's some builds that are competitive and meta that don't require the unlockable builds. So if you're a PvP fan and want to check out Guild Wars 2's Arena PvP straight away, Download the game, jump in, and give it a try. Although, I wouldn't recommend it, because you're probably going to get dumpstered. We've got some emo fashion going on here. Black smoke coming out of the weapons as well. Nice. Another win, please. Jesus, that fucking hurts. This game's not going quite as well. I'm dead in a hole somewhere. Some games you win, others you lose miserably. Now that's some cool fashion right there. I'm liking those wings. He's not looking too bad either. Simple, minimalist. So this time I've gone for a bit of a different build. I've gone for more summons. I've changed my ultimate, so I'm basically just summoning lots of shit now. Okay, we've captured all points. Big CC, big spin. Oh, the damage. There's so many abilities to do in this game. Like the depth to Guild Wars 2 PvP is pretty crazy it's really hard i don't think i'll ever be good at pvp in this game maybe i'm okay at pvp in this game for like certain classes but generally i'm pretty bad i've still got all of my reaper form use the cheer oh the damage and we win most damage most kills and most defense so i did pretty well that game jumping on my revenant herald for some world vs world if you haven't played world vs world for a while there's now a mount called the war claw helps you get back into combat a little bit quicker the mount has two abilities it has a jump and it has a number one ability which jumps on enemies that are downed and instantly takes them out if as a new player you've never played world vs world and you don't know what to do go into one of the maps and look for one of these icons on the map then click on it it's a commander you click on it here join squad and then to start out you basically just want to follow around the big zerg and see what they do to learn the game sometimes in world vs world though you get big groups of pveers that only like attacking walls and don't ever try and fight anyone when you see these two big orange swords on the map in world vs world that means there's a big fight so if you're looking for a big fight, head towards that. I really need to buy a cool skin for my War Claw. Unfortunately, the Guild Wars 2 cash shop's not working for me right now. Capturing the camp, then we're going to grab some supplies. So we're trying to capture this area from the red server. Just built some rams, we're breaking through the first gate. There's a big group behind us. People from the green faction here, my frames. I'm just gonna drop my AoEs and hope for the best. In large scale PvP in Guild Wars 2, you all wanna stand on top of each other because you basically share these buffs called boons and they spread within like certain AoEs. And we're dead. <laughs> Bloody hell. Bloody hell they attacked fast. We just got absolutely destroyed. That was impressive. Okay, that's a lot of players attacking our base. I hate PvE commanders. They're so boring. Everyone's attacking that one cannon. Epic fight going on over here. Why aren't we getting involved? Big damage! Oh, I think I helped a little bit. Come on team, chase them out. Use this thing, strip their boons. Yes! Oh, beautiful. I think I'm having... I think I'm actually having an impact. Oh god, I'm in the stead though. Ouch. 
Wow, we actually want to fight. So we've got the greens over here, the reds over here. This is going to be an epic battle. Let me turn the graphics down. Okay, this is what we're working with, is it? Oh my god, that was a disaster. Get in there. Oh yes, strip their boons. Big damage. Do some DPS on the back lines. Oh, beautiful. I'm actually helping for once. And they are cleaned. I still need to find a class in World vs. World that really suits my playstyle. I haven't really found anything that I enjoy that much yet. I want big burst long range damage. Something that's overpowered. So after revisiting Guild Wars 2 in 2020, my updated pros and cons for the game are as follows. For me, I think the game has a really fun combat system and is probably the best hybrid system of tab and action that we've seen so far in the MMO genre. The game has a wide variety of content and there's something in the game for everyone. Guild Wars 2 has one of the best fashion systems in the genre, right up there with World of Warcraft's trans Smog, except there's an entire die system on top of that. This is the perfect MMORPG for completionists and collectors because there's so many achievements and things to work towards to satisfy that feeling of OCD of completing everything. You've got map completion, lots of gear to unlock, events, you can buy everything on the cash shop with in-game money, and there's a boatload of story to play through too. The Guild Wars 2 community has always been one of the more laid-back and chill MMO communities and people are very welcoming to newcomers. For me, the SPVP and World vs World PvP is good enough that that's a reason on its own for PvP players to play this game. If you're big into difficult PvE content, this game has Fractals, which is basically the Guild Wars 2 version of Mythic Plus for small scale PvP, and then you've also got Raiding for large scale PvE. Guild Wars 2 is a great game to play if you don't know what to do and you just want to watch YouTube vids on your other monitor and chill. You can mindlessly run meta events and make progress, do map completion, or just hang out and flex your fashion. The business model is fair and highly accessible, probably one of the most liked business models in the genre from the MMO community. There's a wide variety of classes, specializations, and builds to experiment with to keep the game feeling fresh. Guild Wars 2 is one of the most alt-friendly MMOs out there. There's lots of fun mini games such as guild halls, jumping puzzles, and racing. The game still has a decently active player base if you pick the right server, and the game has a fully voice acted and ongoing story for those of you that just play MMOs for the story. The most common complaint about Guild Wars 2 is that it's a very hard MMO to get into. I personally wasn't able to get into this game until trying Path of Fire in 2018. Before that, I didn't really get it, and I know a lot of people are confused by the horizontal progression initially. Guild Wars 2 isn't a fully open world game, so teleporting around and going through loading screens does kind of take you out of the world for a bit. Despite the recent announcement of a third expansion, ArenaNet has seemingly been slowing down with content development with staff layoffs and fairly slow content releases over the past few years. I personally think the third expansion will be the last one for Guild Wars 2, as the game isn't overly profitable compared to NCSoft's other games. As a PvP fan, I always felt as though there wasn't enough love and care given to PvP and World vs World in this game from a content development point of view. I think PvP could have been so much more in Guild Wars 2 than what it is now. Some people might be put off from the lack of traditional endgame and sense of gear progression in Guild Wars 2 compared to other MMOs. For me personally, as someone that plays multiple classes, I really wish more achievements and map completion was account wide, or we at least had the choice for this to be the case. I stopped going for full map completion because I switched characters too much, and it's boring to do multiple times on multiple characters. Overall, Guild Wars 2 is the best MMORPG to play if you're limited on playtime and don't want a no-life MMO. There's not really a whole lot of objectively negative things about this game, but for me personally, as much as I like Guild Wars 2, I'll play it for a few months, then start feeling the itch to play something that's going to give me that long-term sense of progression, something I can know life a bit more. That being said, Guild Wars 2 shouldn't change, we need an MMO like this to exist, and many of the things that people dislike like about this game are things other people really enjoy. After revisiting the game, I'm going to stick around and play it again for a while as I'm not really playing any other MMOs. I don't think Guild Wars 2 could ever be my main MMO, but it's a brilliant game for me to return to when I'm feeling homeless in my MMORPGs.
But that's it for this video guys, as always let me know your thoughts on Guild Wars 2 as well as your pros and cons for the game in the comments below. There's so many aspects to it that I'm sure I forgot to mention one or two pros and cons, so I'd love to hear your thoughts. Shout out to Riders of Icarus M for the sponsorship today, and thanks to my ping booster exit lag for lowering my ping when connecting from Southeast Asia to the Guild Wars 2 EU servers. Thanks for watching, I hope you all have a great day, and I'll see you again really soon.